What's up my precog people? In this video, we're gonna tackle how to use the trigonomic identities to solve some advanced trigonomic equations. These problems can be, well, a lot of fun if you're really good at identities. And if you're not, they're not so fun. But hopefully you're getting better and better at working with trigonomic identities and you'll find most of the problems in this video not too bad. All right, let's start taking a look at some examples right now. All right, now we're gonna look at an example where we're gonna be solving some trigonomic equations with our identities being needed because some of them are pretty advanced. Now in this problem, we're going to solve for all values of x from zero to two pi. All right, so now if I look at this, I have a cosine squared plus sine of x plus one equals zero. It's pretty difficult to solve a trigonomic equation when you have multiple different trig functions. Like I have a cosine of x and I have a sine of x. Now one strategy that we've seen in the past is factoring to help us solve, but I can't factor anything out here. There's nothing common between these terms. But this is where our identities are going to come in handy. I'm going to rewrite cosine squared in terms of sine. The Pythagorean identity is that cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta equals one. So I could replace cosine squared with one minus sine squared of x plus the sine of x plus one equals zero. Again, all I made was a replacement, a manipulation. I replaced the cosine squared with one minus sine squared from that Pythagorean identity. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get everything on the other side, because when everything's on the other side, it's usually a little bit easier with that square being positive. So I'm gonna get everything on the other side here. I'm gonna add the sine squared over, so I have a positive sine squared of x. I'm gonna subtract the sine over, so I have a minus sine of x. Now this one and this one would make a two, but I'm gonna subtract it over to get a negative two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and factor. All right, how do I factor this trinomial? Well, I'm gonna have a sine of x and a sine of x, and then a one and a two. Now, if I make that two negative and that one positive, I will be able to get an equation that works. Let's just check this out here. Sine of x times sine of x is my sine squared of x. On the outside, I have one times negative two. That's my negative two at the end. And then on the outside, I have a negative two. On the inside, I have a one sine. Combine those together and you get negative sine. Now I could use my favorite property, the zero product property, because I have a zero over here and a product. So that means that sine of x plus one could equal zero or sine of x minus two could equal zero. And I just have to solve each of these separately. So sine of x equals negative one. Okay, where does that happen? Well, that's pretty easy. That happens at, whoop, I was gonna almost write x there, or theta, it should be x. That happens at three pi over two. Over here, we have sine of x equals positive two, and well, that's actually impossible. That does not exist, because sine is never allowed to be more than one or less than negative one, so unfortunately, sine of x can actually never be two. So this equation has one solution, x equals three pi over two. All right, here's another one, secant squared of x plus tangent x equals one, and I'm stuck here thinking, how do I solve this when I have two different trig I trig functions? I can't combine them. There's nothing common I could factor. Well, that's where our identities are going to come in handy to help us solve. I'm going to replace the secant squared with one of my Pythagorean identities. Secant squared is going to be one plus tangent squared. Hopefully you remember that from the identities. One plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So I'm literally just going to replace it. And now I have all tangents and I could factor. All right, let's see here. To factor, I do need to have a zero on one side. So I'm going to subtract this one on the other side. So I get tangent squared of x plus tangent of x equals zero. Now I'm going to factor out a tangent between my two terms. They both have a tangent in common. So I get tangent of x plus one equals zero, and I'm going to utilize the zero product property. Hopefully you understand how I factor there. It wasn't too difficult. Tangent of x could equal zero. Where is tangent zero? Well, that's going to happen at zero and pi. Pretty simple there, I hope. All right, where is tangent of x plus one equal to zero? Well, that means tangent of x equals negative one. And where is tangent equal to negative one? Well, that's gonna happen at, well, think about that for a second, three pi over four and seven pi over four in quadrants two and in quadrants four. All right, that's it. So I have four answers to this equation, zero pi, three pi over four and seven pi over four. Pretty good problem. 
All right, in this one, I have three sine of x equals two cosine squared of x. Once again, I have two different trig functions and I can't do any factoring. Well, maybe I can do some manipulation. I'm going to replace that cosine squared with one minus sine squared from the Pythagorean identity. So I have three sine of x equals two, and I'm gonna replace just the cosine squared with one minus sine squared of x. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit of solving here. So we have three sine of x equals, distribute that two, two minus two sine squared of x. Now to factor, I do need to get a zero on one side. So I'm gonna bring everything over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna add the two sine squared over. So two sine squared of x plus three sine of x minus two equals zero. I had to subtract this two over as well. And now I'm gonna to have to go ahead and factor. All right, let's take our time and see how we could factor this. All right, how do I break apart a two sine squared of x? That's gonna be two sine of x times sine of x. Now, how do I break apart two? Well, let's see here. I'm gonna put the two here and the one here. Let's see if we can make this work. If I get a positive four and a negative one, that's gonna generate a four sine x on the outside a negative sine x on the inside, and that four sine and the negative one sine is gonna make the three sine x in the middle, and the negative one and the two are gonna make the negative two on the end there. All right, now I'm gonna use the zero product property. Two sine of x minus one equals zero, which means that sine of x equals one half. All right, think about that. Draw a little circle if you have to. Where is sine one half? That happens at pi over six and five pi over six. All right, the second equation I have to solve here is sine of x plus two equals zero. And we already saw something similar to this happen earlier. Where is sine of x equal to negative two? Nowhere, that does not exist because sine of x is not allowed to be lower than negative one. So this equation only has two answers, pi over six and five pi over six. Here we see another equation, two sine squared of x plus three cosine of x minus three equals zero. And we see two different trig functions. So let's make a replacement. Let's replace the sine squared of x. And to do that, I'm gonna use the Pythagorean theorem. And that tells me that sine squared of x equals one minus cosine squared. So there's my two. I'm gonna replace the sine squared only with one minus cosine squared of x plus three cosine of x minus three equals zero. Distribute the two, I get two minus two cosine squared of x plus three cosine of x minus three equals zero. Now I always like my square term being positive, so I'm gonna move everything to the right hand side. I'm gonna add that two cosine squared over. I'm gonna subtract the three cosine of x over and my two and my negative three make a negative one, and I'm gonna add that negative one over so it becomes a positive one. So again, really take the time to understand how I went from that second step to that third step. Hopefully it made sense. Now I'm gonna go ahead and factor. All right, how do I break apart a two cosine squared of x? Well, it's gonna be two cosine of x times cosine of x. How do I break apart a one in the end? That's really easy, one times one. And I want them both to be negative. That way a negative one and a negative one make the positive one in the back. And on the outside I get a negative two cosine, on the inside I get a negative one cosine, which makes a negative three cosine of x. Now I'm gonna use that awesome zero product property. Two cosine of x minus one equals zero. That means cosine of x equals one half. Once again, to figure that out, draw a picture real quick so you can figure out where cosine is one half, and that's gonna happen at pi over three and five pi over three in the interval zero to two pi. All right, then I have cosine of x minus one equals zero, which means cosine of x equals positive one, and of course, that's gonna happen at zero. Now, obviously that also happens at two pi, but remember based on my information here, I want to equal zero, not equal two pi, because zero and two pi are coterminal angles. So I have three answers in that interval, pi over three, five pi over three, and zero. All right, and the final question here wants me to solve the equation sine of two x equals cosine of x for all values of x in the interval zero to two pi. Now the first thing that jumps out to me is a double angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my double angle formula for sine. Hopefully you have it memorized or you're looking at some type of cheat sheet to help you understand these identities. So sine of two x is two sine of x cosine of x. It's really that simple. 
equals cosine of x. Now, how am I going to solve this? Well, both sides do have a cosine, so I'm going to factor. I'm going to first bring the cosine over by subtraction. Now, very quickly, I want to pause. A lot of kids will try to divide by the cosine on each side. Now, when you do that, you're dividing out x's because you're literally dividing away the cosine of x that's going to cancel out or reduce away. And we, it's okay to divide by numbers, like you could divide by 2, divide by 4 to solve an equation, but we don't ever want to divide by something that involves x because we're possibly getting rid of solutions. So we want to factor instead. So bring it over to the other side, and now we can factor out a cosine of x and we get 2 sine of x minus 1 when we factor it out. Don't believe me? Distribute to prove it's the same thing. Now I'm going to use that zero product property. Cosine of x could equal 0. That's going to happen at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Not too bad. 2 sine of x minus 1 equals 0. That means that sine of x equals positive 1 half. And once again, draw a little unit circle if you need to. Where is sine positive 1 half? That's going to happen at pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So this equation has four answers in that interval, 0 to 2 pi. There they are. So a couple really good problems. I know I went through them pretty quickly, but I'm you know trying to do that for you. You can pause all you want. But make sure you understand what I'm doing here is I'm using the identities to do some manipulations to make the problems easier to solve when they have multiple trig functions. All right, that's it for using the trig identities to help me solve some advanced trig equations.